Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I want to talk to you about a very unique set of tools that are built into the software that you can use to create a blog. Now, when I say blog, you may be thinking in terms of WordPress because that is the most common way to create a, a blog type of website. But WordPress is a very different technology. It's an online platform. It is inherently insecure because of the nature of its design. It's built in PHP and on a database. So when I'm talking about a blog, I'm not talking about WordPress. I'm talking about a blog style website. Now, 90 Second Website Builder builds secure websites, offline static websites, that you upload to your server, as you probably know. What the blogging tools do in this software is they allow you to create a blog-like feel and yet still have the advantage of a safe, static, secure website that you're building offline. And so under the advanced tools in 90 Second Website Builder, there are two things that you would be able to use to create this feel and have this look of a blog. It's called the article tool and the blog tool. Here's how they work. The article tool is very simple. I just clicked on it and I'm going to draw a box and you can see that it looks much like a text box, except that there's more to it. If we double click on it, you can see we have some settings here. And what we would use this for is if we were writing an article, obviously, and we would simply paste that article or write that article into this box where we could configure the settings, the font we want to use, the size of it, the color, boldness, etc. All of that can be done just as you would imagine. But since it's an article, it's also associated with a particular day or date, and that will be important later as we go on. You can put an image into this article, and so just by simply selecting one on your computer, it would appear somewhere in the article. And then unlike just a regular text object, it also has a subject line or maybe the title of your article. So this is what the article tool does at, at its very basic core. Now we can control more about the text and the look of the article here. There are several built-in layouts, which we'll talk about in specifically here uh, in a minute. I'll show you several options and several examples. But in the text area, we can control a lot about the way the article looks. Its alignment, its padding, the width of the image, if we were to bring one in, whether we want this to be responsive and the color and size of the title and then some other miscellaneous colors, depending on the layout style we use, these colors may or may not be used. In addition to that, the article can have its own background that can be a transparent color or even an image much like a layer can because this is in a sense a very specific kind of layer. And then of course an article always is associated with a link. So when people click on the button that's going to show if we choose so, uh, it will link to another page where maybe they would get more information uh, about what the article is about. So this is a very simple tool in a sense, but it's also complex because of what it contains and what it can do. Now, right now it doesn't look like much, and I'm going to show you some examples of making it look a little prettier, but this is a basic article. Now, I want to draw your attention to this other tool called the blog tool which is different than the article tool. A blog tool is similar except that you would consider a blog a collection of articles. So while the article tool is one single article, a blog tool contains a collection of articles and those are controlled in here. So I double clicked on the blog tool and you can see that we actually have a completely different interface for this tool. This is a true blog, meaning you would be able to add articles as many as you want to in here by clicking this add button and it brings up a very similar interface that the article tool the single article tool hat. You would write your article, you would type it or paste it into here however you want, you would configure it, change the settings. Again, you can have an image and a subject and a link. So this article is part of a set of articles that belong to this blog. And if you have this on your page and you want to keep adding to it, you can. You would be able to come in here and click add and add another article anytime you wanted to and add to the list of articles within this blog. Now, how it's going to look, again, will have to do with the style. And again, we're back to this, these pre-built layouts. I'm going to show you several of these. So the blog can have its own look based on this layout. And there's so many different kinds of controls that you have on how this looks. The best way for you to understand this is for me to show you several examples. But what we'll be looking at is everything from adjusting the font, its size, its style, its its uh, background color, the subject heading, the button text, what it's going to say, um, extra colors, uh, whether it's responsive or not, and then some other 
miscellaneous things will all play into the look uh, or style of the blog, even the format of the date, and we can even use a divider image. This will all make sense when I show you a finished one. And because it's a blog, we can even generate what's called an RSS feed for this blog. By clicking this button, we can create a syndication. And we'll talk about that in another video because that actually is more advanced and complex. But for those of you familiar with RSS feeds, this is where you would generate one for your blog. Now we also can use the carousel feature in a blog, and I'm going to demonstrate that for you, which is just another way of displaying the set of articles that come with the blog. Okay, so I realize I did that very, very quickly because I want to give you an overview, and you may still not know a whole lot about what a blog is or an article. And so the best way to do this, like I've been saying, is to show you several of them. So on this page of my website, I've got a bunch of them, and I want to show you what they look like. So for example, this is an article that was built with that same article tool. So we clicked on this and drew a box and that's what we ended up with right here but we've configured it to look this way let's double click on it and I'll show you what that looks like so again here's the article settings you can see that we pasted in our article into the uh, text area here and of course we can adjust how it looks with all of these settings it's associated with a particular date we can add an image if we want to but I chose not to in this case and then there's our subject, and you can see that shows up here in this particular bar. That's because of the particular style that we that we chose. If you click on text, you can see the layout that I chose is called card. There's a bunch of layouts in here. I'm using the one called card, and card happens to use this particular look, this subject bar, and this read more button. These colors are controlled by this extra color number one. This happens to be used with this particular layout. And then everything else should be pretty clear and obvious. Alignment, padding, if we're using an image, how wide it should be, what the title should look like. It happens to be white, eight point size, et cetera, et cetera. Also, if we wanted a background, we could do that. I chose a transparent one. And if we wanted to link this article to a particular page on the website or to another website for that matter, we could do that here. So again, this is just a single article that we would put on our website and it can have a certain look. Let's look at another article. I'm going to scroll down and bring up one. This one's kind of plain looking. It's just simply the same idea, but we chose different layouts. So if we double click on it, you can see that we have, here's our, our article text, here's the subject. This time we're using a layout called blocks and that's why it has these sort of two sections here. The colors are going to be affected by all of our settings here. This layout doesn't use any extra miscellaneous colors, so those don't come into play here. These are here uh, depending on the type of layout that we use. The background we're using is transparent, and we would link this article to another page if we want to. So again, it's the same idea, just a little different layout. So let's look at something a little bit more complex. Now this one looks blank, but that's because this particular article, we need to actually preview in a browser to get the full effect. But before we do, let me double click on it and show you what I'm doing. Again, it's the same idea. Here's an article. And this time we're using something called Jumbotron. That's what this layout is called. And we are going to take advantage of these miscellaneous colors. And so we've chosen these. And in fact, we also have a transparent background. And so all of these settings are displayed here. But to see what this looks like, we're going to need to preview. And I'm going to hit the F5 button so we can preview this in a browser. We'll scroll down the page. And this is what that looks like. This particular article has a background image and some white text, and it looks just like this. So you can kind of get a feel now for what you can do with articles. This one was a little bit more uh, complicated in a way, but it was still easy to do. We just simply chose the Jumbotron layout for this. Let's look at some others. We'll scroll down the page and look at this one. I chose to make this one narrow so that you can see what that would look like. And that's the one here with the hamburger. In fact, let me move the camera down so we have a little better shot here. And so let's double click on this one. It's kind of a Pinterest style look. In fact, that's what it's called. This is the Pinterest layout. And so with that, we've uploaded an image this time. So we chose an image width and a line height of 1.2. We're not utilizing any of these colors in this case. The background is a solid white in this case, and we're linking to another page. But all we did was choose Pinterest and change a little bit of the padding and some of the alignment. We put our article in here and we ended up with this particular look. This one is similar, but what I did here in this article is, again, I put my article here and in the settings, I chose a layout called services. 
also uploaded an image, as you can see, with the photographer and chose an image width and pretty much the same idea. Um, a title size of 18 points blue, just like I did in the other one. So these are very similar. This one actually, though, this layout happens to include a button called Read More. And I can decide what that looks like by way of choosing these colors right here. So let's look at some more articles. This one right here is an article. This one is almost everything identically the same, except that this time we're using a layout called Thumbnail. All the rest of the settings are the same. We have uploaded an image, and you can see we've got that off to the side here. And then here's another one with a little bit different setting. As we double click on this, you can see we're using the same article, but we've chosen to use the style called Modern, the layout called Modern, which does in fact tap into this color, and that's where it gets the color for this bar. And I've decided to justify the text so it's aligned on both edges. And then our Read More button picks up its color from extra color number two. So these colors only affect certain layouts, depending on the ones that you choose to use here. Modern happens to use both of them here and here. And of course, we can set the color of the title. And if I wanted it to be bold, I would select that. And you'll see that the subject will then be bold. Let me talk to you about this other tool. We've been looking at articles, single articles. But remember, there's also a blog tool. And that's what this object represents here. Remember, a blog is a collection of articles. And so right now, what I have in the frame here, this entire collection of three articles here is actually one object called a blog. It just has three articles. And so if we double click on it, you can see that the settings are considerably different than just a single article. Again, we've added our articles inside here by clicking the Add button. In fact, if I click on one and go Edit, you can see what that looks like. It's just a matter of adding the actual article text and the link, and you're done. Now, every time I want to add to this blog, and again, there's three articles here, I would do it here. I would click the Add button, and I would add another article. And I can even control how it shows in the blog by using these tools, which one shows first, which one shows second, or I could remove them. And I, of course, since it's an article, it's associated with a particular date, and I have control over all of that. Also, you see that there's the style. Again, we're using the card layout, but there's all of our options. We're using the card layout, which taps into some of these colors. There's the extra color where it picks up the, the blue bar and then read more. And in this tool, we can control that button text that says read more. So that doesn't have to say that in the blog tool. We can control what that one says. Also, the blog will be associated with a particular date. And so here's the formatting for those articles. It's the articles that have their own dates. But this is the formatting for those dates. OK, so now that I've shown you this, and again, there's the RSS feed. Let me show you what this looks like when we preview. So as we scroll down the page, and I move the camera over a little bit, this is what that looks like. It's simply um, a listing of articles. If I added a fourth article, it would be down below this third one. And so I could just have this sort of scrolling screen of articles. And by the way, they don't have to be this wide. I have full control over the width of these. I'm just doing this for the sake of this demo. But this could be the full width of the page if I want or more narrow or whatever we want. But each one of these boxes is considered an article and I can link to another page. Notice this is the one that had the image in it, but they don't have to. And so they could each be unique, but have the same style because they're all part of the same blog. Now let's look at another one down here. I have one down here. It's the same style as the one I just, I just uh, showed you up here, but I added one little feature called carousel. So this one works just, as you would imagine, like a carousel or a slideshow. And so here are the blogs slide carousel style in these directions. And you can see we have little arrow buttons we can use and little pagination buttons we can use at the bottom. So the way I did that was very easy. So I just simply made a copy of this blog and put it down here, actually. Only what I did, all the settings are the same, same style, same card layout. Everything here is the same but I simply enabled carousel. And here I could decide what those arrows and buttons look like as far as color goes and control the delay of the slider. This is a lot in one video. So what I recommend you do is play with this tool a lot and you'll see that 
while it does a lot of complex things and gives you an enormous amount of decisions to make and design choices and design options, uh, you'll see that it's very, very powerful. And yet, in and of itself, it's pretty simple and self-explanatory, as long as you understand the concept of what an article is, and then that a blog is a collection of articles that you could keep adding to your website. So if you're looking for that blog feel, that blog style feel, these are the tools you're gonna wanna use as you're making your blog style website in 90 Second Website Builder.